Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello and welcome to Ink Dependence. Today we're taking a look at some paper. This is blank slate paper and this was started by my friend Dave from the online world. Uh, he got this idea that it would be really cool to be able to customize paper like we're able to customize all the other stuff we do with fountain pens. On this channel we've talked about pens, we've talked about ink, we've talked about papers, uh, we've talked about uh, like all kinds of things like planner systems and those and ring bound systems and all kinds of things. Um, but generally we just kind of have to take the paper we're given and I show you the paper and that's kind of all there is to it because you can't really alter it. You get what they sell. Well in this case Blank Slate will let you design your own paper. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, at the Blank Slate webpage and show you how paper gets designed. Okay, here we are at the Blank Slate Paper Company webpage. All of this is um, designed and maintained by Dave and Kelly. I've met Dave at at least one pen show, maybe more than that. Uh, a couple of their kids here. A dog in the snow. This is Rochester, New York, where your blank slate, blank slate pads will be printed, bound, shipped, all that jazz by these folks here. So this is really a family endeavor, which is pretty cool. So going back to the main page, you'll see you can order a sampler pack, which is a really cool thing to do. You can, uh, you know, just give them five bucks and they will send you a variety of the papers and also uh, all the line weightings and all that sort of thing. But if you don't want to do that, you can print your own guide, which is pretty neat. You can put this on your own page if you like, uh, and you can just print this guy. And this will let you uh, see what the line weights and see what the spacings are like so that when you set up your paper, you'll have some idea what you're going to be getting. All right, so let's go check out this create a pad thing here. Uh, and you'll see when you get here that some stuff is flashing. You can start with a template. You can start with adding your own rules and dot grids and reticle grids and all this jazz, horizontal and vertical lines in any combination you like. And you can build a lot of very cool things with just these four tools. So if you click on a plus, it will add dot grids. And if you look over here on the right hand side, you'll see dot grids. So when you're not moused over it, that gives you the full page view. And when you do mouse over, it gives you sort of a, an up close detail view, which is very useful because sometimes it's hard to see exactly what you've got when you've got little reticles. And sometimes it's, exact, it's hard to see how the pattern is propagating across the page if you only had the small ones. So this is a big improvement over when uh, Audrey and I were designing ours. Or you can start with a template. And this is what I like to do because I mean, frankly, it's hard for me to, to, to conceptualize what a thing's going to look like on paper and how the millimeters work and all that jazz. So you have here dot grid, which is just five mil dot, grid, dot grids in light gray. This is, I think, what Rhodia uses. You can get it set up in graph paper. You can get it with graph paper plus, which is pretty neat. It gives you graph paper, but then also... Once it builds out, there you go. Also gives you these nice orange boxes. So big graphs on top of little graphs. Pretty neat, right? Let's go back to the basic set. And uh, there are several others here to choose from. You can check out the Cornell Ruled, which is real neat for uh, note taking. I think that's a pretty cool thing. You can do classic loose leaf. Check this out. Straight out of grade school indeed. Look at that. You can just print your own. Uh, and this is showing off that they can do any colors you like. So they have some uh, regular colors there, but then if you use the custom picker, you can put in your own hex. You can find your own in the hues if you like. It's a pretty neat situation. Or, and this is one of my new favorites here, you can add weekly pages. So check this guy. This gives you basically a planner layout. So if you wanna have a pad that's also a planner, uh, this is pretty helpful. You have your big boxes over on the right-hand side for the days of the week. You have a bunch of note-taking space over on the left-hand side. And if you're like, you know, I don't really need, uh, I don't really wanna have those kinds of uh, dots or whatever, you can just add, you know, replace them with reticles or whatever. If you wanna make sure that they're the same, you can check your margins, you can check your line spacing and horizontal spacing and that sort of jazz uh, before you to get started. But if you uh, want to make alterations to these, you can just like delete pieces. So if I delete these vertical lines, boom, now I've gotten rid of the edges, which is kind of cool. If I delete these horizontal lines, boom, I've gotten rid of that. So then I'm all, all I'm left with is half a page of dots. You want half a page of dots? That's a way to do it. So let's start with a template just for funsies. Uh, let's use the Cornell because we haven't looked at that. Cornell is a pretty cool note-taking system that I was never taught, but it is really nice. It gives you a top uh, bit there for a header. It gives you little orange dots on the left-hand side. 
or uh, rather um, circles. It gives you gray dots on the right hand sides. So when you're taking notes, you can have notes about your notes, which I think is actually pretty important. All right, cool. So we've got our Cornell. We've decided that's what we're going to have. Next step, choose some paper. You have two papers to choose from. Both are good. Um, I will show you both of them because I have some of each. Uh, they have their own uh, their own little quirks and stuff, I suppose, but they're both very good fountain pen friendly papers. And you'll see that these are 24 bucks each or 22 uh, per pad for orders of three or more. So um, for that, on the HP Premium, you get 50 sheets all printed and uh, glue bound with your own uh, designs on them, or you can get uh, 60 sheets of the Dom Tar. So HP Premium 32 is a pretty heavyweight paper at uh, 120 GSM, but it's also very white at 163. Like it is white as heck. And actually, in looking at some of my pads, I probably should have reversed the papers for the uh, for the various designs I used, but whatever. It was uh, just a first shot. So um, these are a heavy, thick paper. They are ultra smooth, smooth as it says. And yeah, you don't have uh, bleed through or show through, even if you pull ink on there. And I'll show you what that looks like because I've pulled some ink for you. Um, also, it does well to show off all the properties of inks. Um, I have noticed a little bit of, um, uh, of feathering in one case, but only one case. So I think it might just be a peculiarity of that, uh, that nib and uh, ink combo on here. However, you do have slightly longer dry, dry times because it is a thicker paper. It doesn't, it doesn't soak in as well, even though it is uncoated. Both of these are uncoated, so they're not going to feel like Rhodia. Rhodia is too glassy smooth for some people. The other option is this stuff called Domtar Bold, which I like because it's fun to say. It's like Domtar the Barbarian. Domtar. 60 sheets of this one, so you get an extra 10 sheets for the same price. Um, and these uh, have really nice dry times. It says that they're good for lefties and that sort of thing, but um, I, I haven't had any problems writing on this. It doesn't seem like it bleeds or feathers or spreads at all. Um, although you do have a little bit of maybe show through because it's a slightly thinner paper, but I mean, very little. So once you've decided what paper you want, let's say we'll get some Dom Tar. Uh, you'll go up here to the right-hand side. You can select how many of those you want. You can get all three of the same design if you want, uh, and you can add to cart. Oh, I forgot to name it. Oh, well, if you go back one step, let's see what happens when I go back one step. Will it remember? It does. You can uh, name your design. So, testing some papers. Save it. All right, so now we got it. So we called testing some papers. I've already done this. I selected that. We'll add that to cart. Uh, now I've got two. So let's go, let's go down to one. Cool. So 25 bucks discount coupon codes. I don't have a coupon code for you, but um, it'll calculate shipping. I think the shipping for me for three pads of paper was something like seven or eight bucks, which is, you know, pretty, uh, pretty okay for uh, big, thick pads of heavy paper being shipped across the country. So that's how you use the website. Let's go ahead and, uh, oh, and the thing I should say, I guess, is you can go over here on the left-hand side to my pad designs. Uh, and this will, and look at all these that I've been messing with today as I've been making, uh, as I've been making uh, various versions of this video. Sometimes it takes some time, y'all. Let's get rid of some of these. We'll delete that one, and we'll delete that one. All right, cool, so now I got the, uh-oh. Oh man, I got rid of one of them that I didn't mean to get rid of. Oh, I'm doomed. I'm doomed. Oh, well, <laughs> I've got the big graph and I've got Audrey's dot reticle, but shoot, I got rid of one of my own. Well, we've just seen Mike make a mistake. Okay, so let's go back to the paper and take a look at it there. Okay, so down here at the bottom, you have this cool blank slate paper co logo. You have uh, a nice uh, thick cover. And then on the inside, this is uh, HP premium 32 pound paper. Uh, and this is the, this is the, the glue binding up at the top. They do this themselves. Uh, the cover folds backwards neatly. I suppose you could cut that off if you wanted to put in some kind of a, a folio or something. The backing board here is very thick, uh, very thick cardboard stuff. Uh, so definitely stiff enough to write on in your lap or to even hold and write on really. Uh, but I tend to just fold that back. Um, this particular one, let's zoom in. This one is one that I called Big Graph. And basically what we have here are alternating lines of bright orange with little, uh, as maybe you can see, looks kind of faint on my screen, but very light gray lines going through the middle of each of those particular, uh, each one of those, uh, each of those rows. And then I've given myself some like yellow lines throughout so that I can block off a piece. If I want to have like, I don't know, I can have a title up here. And then I can easily use those guidelines to give myself those. Uh, I can also, you know, block off a few if I want. It helps me with 
you know, making notes about various things. I can give myself a, a margin down the side if I want. So um, content. And it's actually very nice to write on. This is a good paper to write on. Uh, it feels smooth, but not glassy. Your pen's not going to skate. You'll get a little bit of feedback, even with this uh, this Pelican nib. I can sort of feel the paper a little bit, but on the other, on the same side, it is very, very smooth. So I like it a lot. Um, it does show off some shading and such and sheen. Here you can see this is actually the same ink I'm writing with here, which is Diamine Skull and Roses. Um, I have another place on this page where I just kind of poured some on the page and let it dry. Uh, I'll get, I'll, there's a little time lapse of that. I'll probably put it on my Instagram for this uh, for this video. But uh, you can see the sheen there. And also here's some shading. This is Three Oysters um, uh, Doldam, I think, which is uh, kind of this weird green gray thing. And I actually got tiny bits of feathering you can maybe see here, but just like a few here and a few there. And that's actually the only time I've seen any feathering on this paper. I haven't seen it with any other ink or, or nib combination. So I think this one's just kind of particular. Uh, and just keep in mind that not all papers and inks will work well together. It's just kind of the way of the world. Um, over here is where I just dumped some sheeny inks on the page just to see what happened. Uh, here is the Diamine Skull and Roses. You can probably see those like reds and such. Let's give it like a non-filtered light source so I can pop some of that red a little bit there. And there we go. There's the sheen. And then here is Krishna Hippo, which seems like crazy. It's this weirdo purple pink ink with uh, like a green and gold sheen to it. So gold sheen up there and then it turns green down at the bottom. Um, this one, let's see uh, the back. Oh, here's the thing about these papers. They are not printed on the back. They are one side printing only for now. Um, as you can see on the back, even whew, it was confused by this page. Um, this is where that Krishna hippo is. And you see a little bit of like bluish outline here, but not really much at all. It's kind of weird because it's not really blue in that ink. And then here where the, uh, the diamine was, it came through a little bit. But remember, I just sort of poured ink on the page and waited. Um, so there you go. Uh, but the rest of it, nothing's coming through. I mean, up here where I'm doing regular writing, that's right here. You can see the dents perhaps. Uh, from where I was writing, but you don't actually see anything else. So yeah, this paper is sturdy. It's also it's also pretty thick. Like this is a this is a this is a weighty piece of paper. But uh, great for writing letters on, great for writing notes on, great for just like dumping ink on to see how it looks because I think it comes out pretty darn nice. All right, so that has been the HP Premium uh, 32 pound with my big graph design. The other two that we have. Here's one, and this is actually the one that you saw me delete, which makes me sad because this is actually, I think, my favorite of all these. Um, this is, um, I forget what I called it, like yellow hashes or something like that, but basically what I did was I made gray lines or a, sort of like a gray green line that goes across. I was going to do this in a real crazy color and Audrey taught me out of it, which is good of her. And then, as you can see in here, are tiny little um, like bright yellow or um, maybe they're kind of like lime green. Uh, it's like a, you know what it is? Like that charged green from Lamy a while ago. But anyway, little tiny reticles. And so they barely interrupt the lines. You end up with these tiny little hash marks that you really don't see unless you're looking for them uh, but if you want to play connect the dots uh, you totally can and that makes it kind of nice for you know if you're gonna block off some stuff again I really like being able to to make compartments uh, this is also good if you want to make uh, like checklists um, do a task whoops do not da da a task Okay, I did that task, which is kind of neat. And if I was uh, if I was gonna do this again, I think I'd probably do the same kind of paper, uh, the same and the same kind of little reticles. This is that Dom tar, and you can see it's not quite as white. Let me grab the other one again, as the uh, as the HP. They're a little bit different. Uh, there we go. So you can probably see that this looks white by itself. But then when you put the HP up against it, it makes it look slightly cream, even with all this extra stuff. So if I was going to do this again, I'd probably use this paper with this kind of this kind of ruling. But, you know, that's how you live and learn. Uh, but you can see this is extra white. And this is like pretty darn white, but a little bit cream next to it. Now, you're not going to notice that it's creamy unless you put it up next to something ultra white like that, uh, that HP. Um, how does this hold up to fountain pen ink and such? Well, real well. So here's the back. Um, you can see this is where I was doing some writing, but um, that's this uh, same diamine ink, and I was really scribbling it down, actually, and it uh, seems like it went, oh, wait, no, I take that back. That's this bit. 
Weird. So this is that same ink that uh, Three Oysters Dole Dam. Uh, I take it back. This is not the the the, the diamine at all. This is that Three Oyster, Oysters Dole Dam? This is in a flex nib. Um, and so I, I don't know what's going on here, but this one did um, did do a little bit of feathering, as you can maybe see right here and a couple other places. It's so weird. Uh, and then it did like come through the paper a little bit which is darn strange because nothing else has, and I've used quite a bit of this paper, and so has Audrey. So I think it's really just that, for whatever reason, that ink and this paper don't love it. Uh, but these bits, were, even where I scribbled here and like these parts um, don't seem to have come through at all. In fact, you can't even really see it. There's not really any show through except for this bit right here, which is weird. Anyway, let's look at what happens when you pool ink on this guy. Uh, what did I do with that page? Ah, I found it. <laughs> Actually, this is a page from this same thing from when I did a um, a uh, a table in one of the pin mixers in Philly. And so people have drawn all over it. It's got all kinds of writing. You can see here is where I've got the, uh, the pooling on the other side. You get just a hint of it coming through. And then here's where it pooled on the other side. So that was people trying this paper out. Uh, and they, uh, they seem to like it quite a bit, which is good because I do too. And uh, the Krishna Hippo has the nice uh, sheen, maybe slightly less sheen than on the HP, but not that much less. And I guess a little bit less sheen on the Diamine Skull and Roses, too. Although, again, not a whole lot less. So some still coming through. And you can still see the sheen in the words, I think, there. Krishna Hippo, you can see the flash. That's that uh, Diamine Skull and Roses stuff. So you still get the sheen, you still get shading, but uh, it's not quite as apparent, I suppose but still eminently useful paper. And then here's uh, one that Audrey did. And this is something I haven't shown before. You get this nice uh, cover page when you buy these. It gives you your order number. It tells you the details of like uh, what kind of rulings you do and how many pads you did in the order and what it's called and everything. And then this version had my address on it. So I just covered it. <laughs> this is also Domtar. And this is Audrey's, uh, this is Audrey's pad. And so we were playing with her, one of her Zoom nibs that she had just gotten. So what she did was she wanted something even simpler than mine. I went for lines. She went for reticles and circles. So if you look in here, you'll see we have little blue, like lines and columns of blue reticles and then tiny gray uh, open circles. And uh, she uses this for writing letters and that kind of thing mostly because she's... Uh, Oh, she's been on a letter writing kick. It's Inko Rimo, man, and she's way better at that than I am. So um, how does it hold up to a zoom nib? Uh, just fine. Just fine. Doesn't uh, really even show through. And then on the back here, it looks like she's been playing with some... There we go. I think this might be some kind of like sparkly crayon, like I was saying. But even that works perfectly well on here. So all kinds of, uh, uh, of inks and... Uh, um... <laughs> wax I guess works just fine on these papers um, so I would say get yourself some blank slate paper if you've been a person who's like I, I'd like to play with uh, designing my own thing I think this is a good way to do it um, they are a little bit pricey at 24 bucks a pad or 22 if you get three you might as well get three right um, and save yourself uh, six bucks but um, you know, it's not going to be for everybody because this is a luxury and thing, but it's also a custom, handmade, small maker uh, sort of thing. And uh, that's the thing that I think is worth supporting. And uh, I see many more blank slates. Well, not blank, but slates with my own things on them uh, in the near future. So thank you very much, Dave, for... Uh, uh, letting me be part of this cool project and like giving me access to that demo and letting me tell everybody about this. If you've been on my uh, my live streams, I've shown these a couple of times, but uh, that's because I really think it's a cool project and you should check it out. All right, that's it. I will see y'all later. Peace out. Even when you pour a whole bunch of ink on the page, man, this is not want to focus now. It's like, no, give me something to focus on. Here's a finger.